Hey guys, Coach Nate here from The Run Experience, standing here with Trevor from Perform for Life Run Lab in the heart of San Francisco. He's gonna take me through the ringer today. We are gonna do a run gait analysis on yours truly, as well as a strength assessment. Something on like foot dynamics? Something on foot dynamics, yeah. Something like that. So <laughs> stick around guys, it's gonna be a good video. So uh, Trevor, I have a confession to make. I okay. don't really know what is going to happen right now. Gotcha. But we're gonna go through a few different tests together. So where are we gonna start? Yeah, so we're gonna start with the foot analysis. So essentially we're gonna check your foot dynamics, how your foot moves, and we'll talk about your shoe choices and if the shoe choices are matching basically your foot and your foot dynamic to make Very sure cool. you're, you know, if you have the really low arch, then those minimalist vibram shoes that you see everybody rocking, those aren't gonna be for you. Mm. But if you have a really high arch, you can kind of get away with wearing almost any shoe. Um, but we want to make sure that your foot's not jamming enough from a toe box and then things like that. Love it. As well. Yeah, and then we'll cruise after that into a PT analysis, check out your muscle strengths, weaknesses, correlate those with the gait analysis. That's we'll cool. So we're doing all of this foot and kind of body strength stuff before <clears throat> we even get on the treadmill and you watch me run. Yes, exactly. Because I want to correlate how strong you are in certain areas with how you run. And that way I can know, okay, this muscle, muscle A, B, and C are strong, these ones are weak. Mm. Now let's see how does that actually affect you running. Then when I see you again in a couple weeks, after you've been strengthening these specific muscle groups, has this changed, has this improved? Oh man, so I guess I gotta come back here. I guess so, you're locked in. <laughs> in trouble. Cool, so we'll start with the foot analysis. So Sorry. go ahead and slide off your socks and shoes for me. There we go. I like the shoes, a lot of people wear these. Yeah, thank you. Little, uh, little shout out to strength, strength movements. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah shout out. They're, uh, they're great, I like them <laughs> for like, just kind of all around training shoe, like if I'm in the gym, like they're not a maximalist toka shoe. Yeah, you know what I mean? Gotcha. I feel like that's a good not tool on the belt. The yeah, I feel like I feel like the maximalist toka shoe is sort of like like the weightlifter's weight belt. It's like maybe okay. I want to wear that sometimes when it's really heavy, what but I, I want to wear that all the time. Yeah, gotcha. That's, that's a good analogy. I like that. Cool. So we're gonna start with the standing alignment of your um, your longitudinal arch. So go ahead and just stand up for me. Basically, I'm checking out to see if your feet are flat or if you have high arches. And you can see here as I run my hand through, you have a really big space here, which we could assume that you have a relatively higher arch. Now, people with relatively flat feet, go yeah. ahead and do a calf raise for me, but put most of your pressure on your pinky toe. So do a calf raise up, and most of your pressure on your pinky toe. You can see how this even exaggerates the arch even more going through your foot now. Mm -hmm. Athletes with flat feet actually create an arch yes. by supinating more so sure. than they would more than pronating as well. Awesome. So he has a high arch on both sides left and right. Awesome. Go ahead and face away from it. And just off camera, yeah. you have your assistant yes. helping you record some of this data in your database so we have this for record for later. So you have this later, right? And then also, um, you said this off camera. So basically on this platform, as we go through this, I see yeah. you have a relatively high arch, right? That's cool. Basically you hit the info button, you have an arch. Oh, which means look at that. A, B, and C, boom, you're good, you move on. Then what he does, basically, he's kind of like my pacemaker. We're going to go through medial longitudinal calcineal, calcineal alignment. He's going to tell me the next step. I kind of have it memorized, but. And I'm going to learn what those words mean. So this exactly. is going to be great. Exactly. Then you learn what that means. But then let's say you're the average runner and you don't really know much, like what shoes I even wear. Yeah. You hear a various heel, you're like, what was that? I forgot. Yeah. Then you hit the info icon and it tells you again something. Get it all in there. Did, then it's all in. Exactly. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So basically, this is the online platform that afterwards, there's not only information, it's educational as well. So. So go ahead and stand up for me, face away from me. I'm gonna look at your heel alignment. Perfect. So we're basically just checking out your heel where it pops out here. And he's relatively normal on both, but he does have slight internal rotation, which is valgus of the heel on both. Go ahead and face me. Yeah, valgus on both. Now right, what's the next one? Here we're gonna push it. So we're gonna look at foot shape. So basically what we're looking at is the relative length of your second toe with your big toe. And you can see this is relatively a square right here. What that tells me is if you're running downhill, yeah. right? And your shoes are, if your foot is jamming in the front of the toe box, yeah. if this toe right here is longer than this toe, that second toe now is most likely going to fall off because you're jamming in the front of the toe box. Sure. Now you see in a lot of shoes that they have, I don't know if this one has it. Yeah, it does. This yeah. second box Be, right here. Beware putting your fingers in there. Oh no, no, you're good, my man. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what this second box is for is if people have that Morton's toe yeah. or Morton's foot, if you cinch this up here, rather than this tongue coming forward, yeah. if you cinch this here. Which I find forward. myself lace locking my shoes. Actually, you might not be able to see me. Yeah. I find myself lace locking, especially when I'm doing a lot of uh, 
trail running and extended mm. downhills. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that way you're avoiding that toe box jam, basically. We call it the toe jam. Yeah. So is it common for people to have a second longer big toe or a second longer toe? Mm. Is it is it kind of arbitrary? Maybe twenty percent. Okay. Twenty percent. Yeah, yeah. Basically, if you have that second toe is longer, does it you mean you're more, like super smart and good looking? If super you have smart, that? good looking, instant sexy appeal. There we go. Sexy. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Basically, what you want to do is make sure you're using the second loop on the shoe that will cinch up the shoe. Now your foot is less likely to jam in jam front in of front. the toe box. Well, that's good to know. Exactly. So basically, you can use that as you're running downhill. I always use it when I'm trail running and sure. do a lot of elevation change when I'm going downhill. But basically, for anybody that that toe is longer or even even, I would suggest doing it most of the time. Very cool. So that's called Morton's toe. Foot dynamics. Foot dynamics. Go and stand up for me. We're going to do a calf raise. Okay. Naturally, just relax. Go up into a calf raise. Just whatever that looks like? Just whatever that looks like. Yeah, good. Didn't and hold it or go no, back and back down. down. And up one more time. Good. You're putting most of your pressure on your pinky toes. Up one more time. And back down. Got to the supinator. Okay. Perfect. Go to eyes for me. Cool. Athlete's foot. Athlete's foot. Any issues with athlete's foot? Like uh, fungus on the fingernails? Or not fingernails? Oh, oh Every turn right here. No, I, I don't actually. No? Yeah, that's Yeah, awesome. my, my feet seem to be decently good. And you've kind of mentioned lost toenails. I mean, even after marathons or 50Ks, I've never, never lost had blisters, that. never had toenails fall off. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. So what we see is a lot in our ultra running population. We had a yeah. coach, his coach Michael Lee, he's pretty big in the middle there. Yeah. He came in and all of his toenails were off. Yeah. All of his toenails were off. Yeah. And basically it's... Um, it's a thing. You, it's definitely a thing. <laughs> um, as feet sweat, that sweat can combine with the, the shoe and kind of start to rub and deteriorate yeah. the, the strength. Well, the real secret is I just don't talk about running. I don't really run a lot myself. Yeah, that's a good secret. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so basically, um, foot dynamics are, are solid, supinator. And bunion. And bunion. So we see a slight, I would say that's not 20 degrees. No, he's okay. So the biggest thing with the bunion, what we're looking for is a 20 degree um, outward angle, essentially, okay. of the big toe here. And the bunion yeah, is together. this part of your foot, angle. or just... Okay. Um, yeah, so it's exactly this part of the foot. You see it a lot in like um, people that were in the military and had to wear their boots that were oh, super close. Yeah, like, those terrible this, things. Yeah, then you get this big bump right here. Right. Essentially, you have a slight one. It's not too bad, but yeah. we quantify a bunion by 20 degrees or more at that angle, the acute angle. Interesting, okay. Yeah, exactly. And what that does is, essentially is, we see it a lot in our women runners who work in like sales. They do a lot of They're heels, in narrower shoes. Narrower toe boxes, exactly. And what that does is it pinches this toe box a little bit. Yep. Now, as you run, think about a marathon. You're taking average cadence is 170, 180. Sure. So let's say average pace is like pretty quick. Maybe they're finishing Six minute three miles. Hours. Yeah, yeah, no okay, problem. Finishing in three hours, exactly, right? They're taking around 56,000 steps. Yeah, You're taking 56,000 steps, and this foot is at that 20 degree angle. This toe is going to jam into the others, and it's yeah. going to change the metatarsal alignment. So it really changes foot. everything. Yeah. So, like, the shoes we wear can really impact the way our foot interacts with the ground, and it actually has nothing to do with the cushion. The cushion. It has to do more with the, the shape of the shoe? Uh, yeah, relative. It does have stuff to do with the cushion yeah. as well as the shape of the shoe. So let's say for you, if you wear a very narrow toe box, yep. this is going to jam your toes in. Now that's going to affect how you press off of the ground, mm. so the force profile into the ground will be a little off. I see. And that force profile is going to disperse force throughout your metatarsals, these bones, in your feet here, in a way that they're not going to take it very well, and stress factors could possibly have. Oh, we don't like those. No. <laughs> no bueno there. Cool. That's that's awesome. Awesome. Calluses. So we're going to take out the bottom of your feet. All right. Calluses are essentially our body's way of telling us where we're I feel very exposed right now. I feel like you guys are seeing the side <laughs> of my feet. You know what I'm going to see. We're basically looking at callusing patterns. Callusing is our body's way of telling us where we're putting a lot of force. Yeah. And for you, we can see that there's a large callusing pattern right here on the base of the foot. There's also a pretty big one on the inside here, and there's not one on the pinky toe. Basically what I can see is naturally going into your calf raise, you put a lot of pressure here yeah. on this point. You also press off a lot of pressure here. Mm -hmm. It's only you're most likely a very neutral runner. So as you're running, you're probably putting equal pressure on your big toe, and your pinky toe, as you're stepping up. Now the biggest thing that we see here is when we start to see the calluses on the inside of the big toe and the outside of the pinky toe, we know that people are rolling their feet. Right. Too much inversion or eversion, and that's gonna cause issues down the road. Right. So if you see too much blisters on the, or, or too much uh, callus on the outside of the foot, that can potentially be an issue? Yes, that can definitely potentially be an issue because we all know, it's kind of like a dog's, a dog's uh, paw, right? Yeah. All their callusing patterns happens on the bottom. Right. But if, it, if you start callusing on the side, then they're not running and tracing force at the bottom. Right. 
I guess you could say where it's supposed to be, right? And then that kind of leads into, no, let's check out the muscles and why that could be happening. Right, right, and right. And then let's see if that's affecting your hips or affecting your knees and things like that. So, cool. Hammer toe, claw toe. Hammer toe and claw toe. No, he has neither. So no hammer or claw. Those no are kind of cool claw. names. Just for a, a bit of. Do you of think someone has that Instagram handle? Hammer toe. Hammer toe or claw toe. Claw toe. They might. I bet it's pretty, pretty popular if they do. They just post pictures of toes popping up. <laughs> Basically, if the big toe is stuck up like a mm. hammer, or if the toes are at a clawing position, it tells us a lot about your foot dynamics and how you're trying to claw and grab the ground to push off. Oh, wow. It tells me that one of your calves most likely aren't firing as optimally as they should be. Oh, I see. You're grabbing the ground and trying to pull yourself forward rather than doing a simple calf raise. And right. Pressing with the calf. There's some type of limiting factor in the calf that's making you grab and do that. Again, do that 56,000 times. Yeah, <laughs> you're seriously. In, right? <laughs> yeah, next one. Meditarsage. Meditarsage. So go ahead and place your feet flat on the ground for me. You can still say seat or stand, whichever is more huh. comfortable for you. I'll take a seat. Yeah. So let me know if you have any pain. I can see a slight bruise here. Did you hit that or is it just a little purple? Uh, it might just be a little purple. Yeah, do you see this here? Yeah. yeah. Any pain here? Mm-hmm. They're pretty big cows there. Or I guess not cows, cows can build up. Any pain? No? Mm. Pain? I mean, I can feel your fingers. That's yeah. supposed to be good, right? No, that's very good. <laughs> your nerves are working. <laughs> no, so basically what we're looking at here, um, metatarsalgia is essentially, if there's a sensitivity in the metatarsals, yeah. it's the number one indicated and correlated factor with stress fractures in the foot. So just some meat pressing on the feet, I can tell you, okay, if people you are might set up not for this. have a stress fracture now, but there might be something in your gait or your muscles causing your feet to get beat up. So that's really important, right? Because so often runners feel like the stress fracture came out of nowhere. Like they stepped off a right. sidewalk and got hit right. by an Uber. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> struggle. It did, it's not that way, right? It's there there are sometimes way, early no? warning signs present themselves. Yes. And this is one of them. Yes, and essentially there's a tipping point. I mean, if I'm familiar with the tipping point. Essentially there's a point at which your body reaches this threshold. And once yeah. you get to that threshold, now it hurts. But it had been painful before. Right. Your body was just managing managing the movement. Essentially a lot of stress fractures happen from poor gait mechanics or weak muscles leading to poor gait mechanics and so on. But this is kind of like a screen. Now some people that I've had come in, this is so sensitive that they almost start crying. Oh wow. Extremely sensitive to the point where it's Okay, let's stop. Let's talk about this. I think you should possibly get an X-ray, only because I want to make sure you're not putting in 50 miles a week on a stress fracture. Right. Because if you are now, it's going to take longer to recover later. So essentially, that's that's kind of the processing of that. Next one. Neuromas. Neuromas. You have no neuromas. Very good. What are neuromas? Um, neuromas are basically it's it's a part of Morton's. So it's here. If this toe is longer, yeah. Um, possibly that toe jamming in could affect okay. the toe loss. Just an extension of Morton, uh, Morton so. And toenail condition? Toenail condition is good. We had talked about that earlier. Healthy um, toes. Yeah, healthy toes. <laughs> toenail condition is super good. And subtalar joint. Subtalar joint, all right. Yeah. Relax, I'm just gonna check out the mobility. That's pretty locked up there. Do you feel there's not a lot of movement in this? Your foot's moving, but this joint here is kind of Yeah, my, basically my big toe joint. Basically, toe. so yeah, big two, and then you got this one. Yeah. Basically this guy's not really moving too well. Let's check. So I'm afraid this guy might be stiffer. You feel, no, this one's actually more. Oh, it's got a little bit better. You see that pop up? Oh yeah, sure. See that pop up? We're in this one. I go for that. It kind of gets, well, it pops up a little bit, but it's a little yeah, more but it's stiff. Yeah, it's a little stiffer. It's a little more rigid to feel as well. So it just tells me a little bit about foot dynamics and how this will work. First rate mobility? Yeah. Perfect. Any pain with that? Mm -hmm. So we're just testing how much the big toe can move up and down and back and forth. Why Pretty is the much. big toe important? Um, so the big toe is super important because it's it's basically when we as we pronate and press off our big toe, we put a lot of force in this toe. Right. right? So if this is limited in its capacity to move, then that force is going to get directed to different places that might not be able to take that force. And it'll right? just start to alter the dynamics of your foot. Force. So let's say this big toe can't right. move backwards. Right. right. If it can't move backwards, as you're going and pressing off the ground, this is going to get stuck here. Got it. So you're going to compensate. How are you going to compensate? You might roll and press off your pinky toe because there's right, movement right, here. Right. You might roll and press off areas that is going to cause you to invert your foot. Normally. What's that? Normal for sure. He's good on both of those. Right. Right. We're going to knock it back to uh, four foot. Four foot mobility? Yeah. Perfect. So I'm Four just gonna foot. Do, yeah. I'm basically just going to do inversion, eversion, everything, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. 
So what is what is inversion and eversion? Because those are terms that you don't always hear too often, or at least right. outside yeah. your run lab. Basically, it's just how likely are you to rotate your foot in, or in and out. Out. So it's almost like the direction of somewhere to land and like roll their ankle. Right. That would be like a severe eversion event. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So inversion and eversion. Basically, what we can do here is see if like have you sprained your ankles. Quite often. Have I? Basketball, yeah. Uh, I have, I have someone who's been able to like, I can roll an ankle on trail and then I'm fine. Like I could land on the side and it's like one that. or two steps. I'm like, that sucked. And then I'm just totally That's cool. That's interesting. So a lot but of there people is, don't have that. But. Yeah, but there is a time, um, a couple years ago, I was in a Spartan race and I came off one of the obstacles and landed in one of the pool's water and landed on a rock. Oh, under the pool of water, and my ankle did wow. something funky. And it still hurt. Was I right can't remember which one it was. Yes, we'll check it out. So basically, um, inversion and eversion is a nutshell, is how likely are you to roll your ankle in or out. Got it. Um, and what that tells us is if there's laxity in one ankle or the other, Right. and I can immediately feel that it's probably this one, because yep. you feel, that's locked. Yeah. You feel the difference? Yeah. And if you come over here, and we go into eversion, there's yeah, I think it was the left. Movement. Yeah. There. But this one is like, nope, dude, I'm Doesn't not doing want to do that. that. Exactly. But you still have that. And that's a lot more excessive. Yeah, interesting. As well. So what that tells me is your body's trying to say, I need to tighten up this side, probably in this lateral gas shock here. So yeah. So you have to try and pull that. And actually, this is the one area that is like my one area that I have this to is pay your attention one area. to. Gotcha. Like, I get a little, like, you can notice I have like a little bump along yeah, this inner part of my Achilles. And I have to work a lot on like kind of this inner part of my calf and out here. And that's like when I start ramping up my mileage, like that's like the one thing gotcha. that I have to pay attention to. But it, it doesn't present itself as like normal Achilles stuff. Right. So what I can see is you put a lot of force on the outside of your foot. So as you're yep. pressing off of this, also you have a lot of inversion here, yeah. which means the foot that's mostly, res or the muscle that's mostly responsible for this press off yeah. is this lateral gas shock head. Basically okay. it means this guy's sleeping, he's chilling. Yeah. This guy's doing a lot of the doing work. Doing all the work. I.e. this inserts here as well in the inside, but it's getting underworked. But after you ramp up the mileage, yeah. this guy's activated more. Right. It could flare up. Right. Down here Interesting. As well. So we'll look into that in a little cool. bit. Cool. As well. Here's oh, I'm learning so many things. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, going to footwear. Oh, footwear type. Awesome. So let's talk about your so Do you run in these? I do run a little bit, like not a lot of miles, but okay. I'll like yeah. run five to ten minutes in okay. the gym. Sometimes okay. if we're doing a workout that has like a one or two mile run with some strength, I'll do I'll do the perfect. Thingies. So the first thing we always look at on our athletes' shoes is just the wear pattern. It's just the wear pattern, right? And this tells us a lot. So this shows me that as you are running or possibly walking, yeah, you're probably where you're walking as well, yeah. you could be heel striking. Okay. Pretty often, it makes sense as you're walking. But as you're running, you're placing a lot of equal pressure in yeah. your forefoot. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. What we don't want to see is that there's a huge side chunk shaved here, off. Right. Uh, so I just had a client yesterday who this whole section right here, gone. Right. She said every three weeks for shoes. Wow. So incredible. think about three weeks. Every three weeks the you're shoes. You're breaking on shoes. That means that you're heel striking on the inside of your foot so hard. That you're breaking through. It starts to shoe. break down. Right. So what do we do? We increase her cadence, make sure she's focusing on her forefoot. Right, right. And then her pain in her knee was starts to go away. Yeah. But you can kind of tell because there's all these like little bumps here. You can see the shoe tread. All right. Let's see the stuff in the gum on the street earlier. <laughs> um, but then right here it's a little bit smoother, and then you're looking for just basically the smooth parts of, of the course, shoe. Of course, yeah. Anywhere that the shoe's been worn down, it tells cool. us a lot about where you're putting a lot of force. Next thing we go to is talking about the shoe type itself. Okay. So we can see that this has a relatively easy toe break. Right. If you take a lot of shoes, like as we were talking about earlier, yeah. opens, right? If you did that, they're not gonna bend. Right. They're locked in. That's a stability shoe or a motion control shoe that locks you into a specific motion. Now you with high arches in your feet, relatively you can kind of get away with wearing a lot of shoes. Yeah. But if you had a very flat foot and you're wearing that um, stability shoe or like right. drop shoes or anything like that, that motion control could put you at a, a position that isn't too big for you. Right. Because, as we were talking about earlier, <clears throat> an athlete with a low arch, as they put pressure on their pinky toe, they create their own arch. So right. if you restrict that from an athlete, 
then they're not able to create an arch and they're running with flat feet constantly, right? I see. So even athletes with flat feet can create an arch as they're running. Right. But if you restrict that, then it's not so. No bueno, right? No bueno. <laughs> yeah. So then we also look at the torsion here. So this yep. is a very, very minimalist shoe. So torsion is like the ability to kind of twist yeah, the shoe. Yeah, yeah, you can twist your shoe. Basically for you, this is totally fine. Yeah. Um, but let's say uh, you had that ankle is pretty loose. Yeah. Right. So for your right foot, totally fine. Left foot, not saying you should wear two different shoes, right? Right. But your shoe choice, if you are going to go trail running, you might actually want a stability shoe yeah. that decreases this motion because it'll help you here, but you still want a really, really solid toe break right. in the front. Right? So basically, <clears throat> next time you go looking for trail shoes, you want a little stiffness here that'll help with the roll. These, I mean, will just... Yeah, they'll so just roll out, completely. Right? Yeah. yeah, so this has been kind of like my short running, kind of all around, make sure I feel kind of connected shoe. lifestyle yeah. shoe. But then if I am doing those longer runs with those increasing challenges, given my left ankle particularly, yeah. I might want a little bit more torsional support. Yes, a little bit, just to reduce that likelihood of rolling the ankle. Now, if you roll your ankle, I mean, you might still just roll your ankle, right? Sure. But we would want to try and support that, as long as you have a good toe break um, in the front. Cool, well. yeah. great. Good then. Yeah, yeah, so we're all done with the foot. Great, so we are all done with the foot. Uh, the next piece here, what are we going to get into? So the next piece is, a, we call it the physical therapy assessment. This, uh, essentially in a nutshell, we're going to check out muscle strength and balances and sweet. a couple dynamic movement patterns as well. Alright, well guys, let's get into it. Alright, so thankfully my shoes and socks are back on. I'm standing <laughs> and the testing is not over though. Not over like, no. What do we got next? Next we have the PT assessment. So the we're PT assessment. Uh, yeah, through your strength, dynamic mobility, stability, and then we'll also do a little bit of muscle testing and see how strong. That's cool. So we kind of want to see how we're moving, like kind of balance, coordination, muscle testing, uh, just to see what potentially would or would not show up when I'm running. Of course, yeah. What's strong, what's weak, and how does that relate to your running and your gait? And is there anything that we can help you with to make your gait more efficient at all? Love it. Let's get started. Awesome. Let's get started. So first thing, go ahead and stand up for me. Just stand with your feet together. Okay. You're going to take valgus or varus of your knees. So valgus, we hear that a lot, right? Valgus and varus of the knee. Maybe not. I don't often. know if we hear it that much. No, maybe not. I think in our in our little trainer bubbles, we, we hear those hear words thrown around, but I'd say right. in the the non geeked out running world, they right, don't hear right, it as right. much. Basically, if you ever hear valgus, the knees are crashing. So valgus is my knees are caved in and so Right, so if you, ever yep. hear, if you see a runner in there, um, they talk about their knees hitting each other. Yep. Or if they have the mud on the inside of their ankle here, it's right. like that they're going at valgus. And then yep, valgus kicking. kicking. Mm. Exactly. So valgus in, varus is out. Varus is out. Yeah. Okay. The first thing we're looking at is valgus or varus knee alignment. So we're going to sit with our feet together. I'm just going to take four fingers and place them here. Yep. What that tells me is that you're a bit bow-legged. There. If it's four or more, we kind of can yeah. assume that it's a bit um, externally rotated, but your kneecaps are very straight as well. So he's good on both, with the right and the left leg. Have you ever had any injuries in this knee? Uh, no. I think a long time ago I I was running over a barbecue grill and nice. I sliced my knee all the way open. Okay, so that so might be a bit of an illusion because I see that you have a little less extension on this side than this side. Only if you flatten them out, yeah. put a bar across. It's farther out, but that could be just scar tissue that builds yeah. after that as well. Next one? Lumbar spine. So go ahead and just go down and touch your toes for me. Hinge on over, all Hinge right. Hinge on over, yeah. Perfect. So you can see that he has a very curvilinear shape here as well. And go ahead and stand up for me and extend your hips out as far as you can. Good. We're looking to see if your hips can pass your toes, which they cannot, which tells me you have relatively tight hip flexors. Sure. Here, that are limiting your expression. Oh, extend. interesting. So that if I can't extend this way. Right. Yeah, I mean, you can see that your pelvis line is directly, pretty much over your, like, uh, Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Here. So basically, what does that, what does that do in running, yeah. right? If you can't get full extension of the hip, yeah. you can't fully activate the glute. Biggest mm -hmm. muscle in your body, super economical and efficient if we use it. Mm -hmm. If you don't use it, then I don't like this. Right. Of course, that's an exaggeration, but you're not fully using yeah, the, of course. the glute, right? Exactly. The next Single one? leg balance. Single leg balance. So go ahead and stand on your left foot for me. Okay. Triple flex your other foot. Ooh, triple flex. So, is that hip, hip knee, flexor, ankle? knee, ankle. Good. And just stay there. Cool. Good. So I'm looking for natural rotations here. You can see, do you feel yourself naturally rotating? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Happening? I see my foot kind of swimming around yeah, a little bit. Close your eyes for me. Oh man, here's where the sauce comes out. The sauce, the secret sauce. Awesome. And then let's switch feet. He's good on the left. <laughs> nice. Okay. 
Composure. Composure. Focus. Good. I feel like this is like a wax it's on. Yeah. It's like yeah. a wax on, wax <laughs> off moment. Eyes are open. Here we go. Eyes are open. Again, I can see that you have slight internal rotation. You favor that. Do you feel yeah, that? I yeah, I do, yeah. So what that tells me is you might possibly have valgus in your gait analysis as well. And go ahead and close your eyes. Good, and go ahead and relax. You're good on both. You'd be surprised. About yeah. 50 or 60% of our runners that we get can't do this. Yeah. About 90% cannot stand in close grass. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's very yeah. hard. Yeah. Struggle so, is real. The struggle is too real. <laughs> Next Single one. Leg Single leg heel rise. Awesome. So I'm going to have you over here. You can use this mm -hmm. um, essentially kind of the balance and stability. What I'm going to have you do is a functional test. We're going to shoot for 25 single leg calf raises. Oh, no, man. Yeah, it sounds like a lot, right? Essentially, as you're running, we talked about 56,000 yeah. steps earlier. If you're running what if I get like an energy gel, like after 15 calf raises? I yeah, get a you, little, you definitely get one. Yeah, you get an espresso shot, so you get the whole gear. Yeah, you're locked in. <laughs> you're locked in. Basically, we know if an athlete cannot do 25 comfortably, yeah. 56,000 is going to be pretty It's going to be a lot. Difficult. Mm. Right? It's going to be quite okay. a bit. So we use that in our field as kind of like a functional test. So, so 25? 25. There yeah. we go. You can use that as balance to which channel to use it. All the way up and all the way down. Okay, all the way up and all the way down. Is this all the way up? Yes. Okay. It's about as far as I can go. Yeah, that's okay. But I hope that's all the way up. Yep. Is this the finish line? Yeah. Almost there. We're also looking for no. the difference in hypertrophy and atrophy. Hypertrophy is muscle size. Yeah. And atrophy is muscle dwindling. Yeah. Way. 13. Here we go. How you feeling? Scale 1 to 10. Where are you at? Uh, I'm a solid six right now. Six? Okay. <laughs> 19, 20, five more. Struggle, yeah, five more. Oh, yeah. Feeling these. Yeah. Last one. <laughs> 25. Good. Scale one to 10, where was that at? I probably finished it like an eight or a nine. Eight or nine, so ideally, won't that be a three or four? Oh, three, okay. Four, like, no big deal. You want that to be like, yeah, that, that was fine. I could do like 90 How of those. How many more? Yeah, that's nothing. Right? Okay. Single leg. Basically, yeah. running is a single leg dynamic exercise. On one foot, jump on the other foot. Jump right. Jump on the other foot, jump on the other foot. What we want to focus so on. I got some weak little capacity. foot and ankles. Not too bad. Yeah. Relatively on the weak mm. end. Big, uh, pr very productive exercise. That was a me. very soft way of saying <laughs> that. <laughs> very good way for you to do that. Lots of single leg calf raises. Okay, so cool. Maybe once or twice a day. And let's check out the other foot. All right, cool. The Let's reason we do ideas. both is sometimes we see asymmetries. Sometimes the left leg might be like a three and the right leg might be like a nine or ten. Yeah. Five. So far, so good. <laughs> You're out here. Nine. Ten. Okay, creeping up a little bit. Creeping up. Good. Yeah, this is real. Fifteen, ten more. In the notes section, we add that he's supinating towards fatigue more so than moving. All right, last five. I'm gonna say. Yeah, this is hard. That's like, like possibly harder than the other. Uh, side. it feels decently even. Yeah, I can't tell. Right. And twenty-five. Guys, gotcha. twenty-five. Yeah, it's definitely a burn. Like mm -hmm. I could do more, but yeah. I don't know if I could do like fifty. Right, so it's, it's like, not relatively 50 more, you like paid like, me a lot, like maybe 40. <laughs> and gave you food after two. If my life <laughs> depended on it, 41. I'm not sure. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. So essentially what, what it tells us a lot is ultra runners themselves, they do that and they're like, that was nothing. I was like, mm. how many more do you want me to do? This is boring. This is ridiculous. Right, I'm just so strong right, right, here. Right. When we get into our more general pop, runners are just getting into the game, really trying to take off. Around five or six, they start to burn out. Really start to burn fatigue, out. Right? Then everyone else is on the spectrum all the way up. Yeah. So it kind of allows us to make sure we know, okay, your calves kind of aren't ready for the mileage yet. Right. Your foot won't be so I like that. So this is like a good assessment to see how ready your body is to handle the mileage that you want to run. Yeah, but in a, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. There's no, there's no correlation to that or research done on that specifically, but basically if you can't do 25, then we know yeah. there's some things that we need to work on. I like that. Right, exactly. And then especially, some of the athletes get to um, five and then they can't get off the ground. Yeah, right? and I love this. Say, Any more than a 5K for you might not be the best idea because now you're just forcing it. Right. And then they're going to use their hip thrust and everything. Interesting. Else.
What do we have next? Uh, predictability for lower extremity. Injury. Um, he has a very low predictability. So our predictability for lower extremity injury is a correlation between calf raises, your toe touches, and your hip extension. I Basically, see. if you can't touch your toes, you can't do uh, the extension, and right. you can't do calf raises. Okay. We know that you're limited in mobility. Yeah. Limited mobility in the hip flexors, uh. and your calves are also limited as well. Got the trifecta. Red that is flag. an ugly trifecta right there. Yeah, <laughs> kind of for us, that's like red flag. Let's make sure we, we go into our breakouts. Okay. Now our breakouts for you aren't necessar necessary, but with each and every injury or each and every yeah. athlete that comes in, it's a special case. So our breakouts, we go even deeper into mm. them. So for example, for the, the, um, the touch, toe touch, toe touch, if you put all of your weight on your left foot and go down and touch your toes, you might find that an athlete can touch their toes, but if they put all of their weight on their right foot, they're limited. They cannot. Right. So you're taking away the stability of one of mm. the legs. If you take away the stability, we know we need to work on the stabilizers. I see. If it's still wrong, and not wrong, but if it's still not passing yeah. both, then we know that is a true limitation of actually the joint capsule itself. I see. So we break it down into, is this a stability or mobility issue? Very stability cool. we can fix. Mobility might need to go see some uh, a sports orthopedic surgeon. I see. Yeah. Wait a Single leg squat. Single leg squat. Single leg squat. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have you up here. Go ahead and stand at the edge of the box. Okay. Just one leg out, straight in the legs can go forward. Inches. Yep. And you're just gonna actually reach this toe and just touch the heel down. Oh, so right. it's just gonna go right yeah, up. Just straight down, just touch here. And stand back up. Perfect. Let's do five there. What I want you to focus on is the valgus of the knee or varus, or right. the knee crashing in or crashing out, as well as the hip angle. So you can see that that's very, very linear. That's awesome on that side. Well done. Good, you can see that the foot is in line with the knee, yeah. in line with the hip. It's wonderful. Yay. Let's see if it's the same on the other side. All right, here we go. I do practice some of these sometimes. Awesome. Good. Good. And that one is a slight valgus. And we can also see that you're compensating your upper body as yeah. well. Do you feel yeah, like I shift over laterally to balance? Yeah, so you're shifting balance. your hips over to balance. Oh my god. That's great. Yeah. I passed on both. Awesome. Go this side's a off. little... Yeah, of course. So go ahead and step down and I'll show you kind of what, what we're looking for. So I just had surgery on my ACL okay. very recently, about three months ago. With that, this leg was completely dead. Did you pass the trifecta test? I cannot pass a trifecta test yet. No, okay. it's super limited. Yeah, my mileage is really low right now. But as I drop down, you can see that my knee automatically goes in and right. my hip pops out. Right. Now, as you're running... And this hip drops down. And this hip drops down, hip drops. Yeah. Right, so we're hip hike. So I need to do a lot of single leg glute bridges, a lot of hip hikers, core stability, and yeah. the distal fibers of my quad. All of those things need to strengthen. Every time I land from running, and do right, that, it's that one little motion. I'm gonna have the pop. If I don't have runner's knee, it's gonna hurt. Right. Yeah. So the single leg uh, squat is such a good test because it's just an exaggeration of every run step I take. Exactly. Right. I'm maybe not going down as deep, so this is a little deeper. And then obviously when I run, I just hit the foot, hit the ground, come right back up. Yeah. But this makes me kind of live there for a lot longer period of time. Yeah, exactly. So when you're running, you're subjected to two to eight times the amount of your body weight. Thanks. So do you think how much you weigh? What's it to you? No, I'm kidding. I don't know. I think I'm around 170. Most so 170 months. times eight? On a good day. 170 times eight. Do you think you could possibly do a single leg squat with 170 pounds times eight? So let's say it's around eight, 900 pounds. I mean, I feel like some of those like little energy drinks are pretty good these days. That's true. They are rocking. They are rocking. Probably Big not. jelly might have it. Yeah. But basically, people can't even <laughs> There's squat. There's no way. People yeah. can't even squat that That'd much. be impossible. So your knee is subjected to so much force as you're running. Yeah. If you can't handle your body weight against gravity during this, think about how fast you run and how hard you that strike this ground. ground. That is way more than this. Right. So yeah, this is a bit of an exaggeration of the movement. Right. The force profile is yeah. exponential that's happening in the knee itself. Cool. Yeah. What do you have next? On the table, yeah. hip flexor strength. Awesome. Hip flexor strength. So let's talk about what we're going to do a little bit. Um, have right. you heard of muscle testing? It's I have. Using, um, okay, awesome. What is it to you? I've heard of muscles and I've heard of testing. Oh, great. Yeah, different platform. So basically what we're going to do is uh, it's a bit of neurokinetic therapy. Okay. Fancy word for how well can your brain connect to your muscle fibers Okay. and how strong is that interaction. I, I if see. I tell you to use your hip flexor, 
can you really rock the hip flexor and turn it on completely? Also, is it strong relative to the left side or the right, right. side? This or is, is like some other muscle kind of compensating instead? Of course. And what do we see? Do we see movements in your shoulder as you're right. pressing down and that sort of thing? So I see. A lot of professionals in um, our field use it as a pre-post test. So mm. chiropractors sometimes, if they see something that's out of line, they might do a muscle test. Right. Realign you. Now that nerve is activated, do that test again and now you're strong. Oh, right. great. Pass the test. Didn't work. I need to try something else. I see. So it's kind of an if A then B type okay. scenario. Yeah. So go ahead and lay on your back for me. I'll lay on your back. Bring your right knee up to 90 degrees. Good. Now I'm going to press here. Go ahead and just meet my force. Okay? Yeah. So I'm going to press down to the knee. Feel there's a good neural lock there. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and push that. Perfect. Feel the neural lock. Mm -hmm. Stable, no shaking, no activation, nothing else around. Um, moving and shaking. I'm nearly locked in. <laughs> nearly <laughs> locked. And let's check out the other side. I'll press here. And this leg is going to be stronger. Good. Okay, now we're going to touch the distal fibers of your quad. I'm going to play here. I'm going to press down here. Don't let me, okay? Good, and relax. And feel how much the core yeah. activated there? Yeah, how much do you have much pressure to push? Um, I'm just meeting you, and then I'm gradually increasing the okay. pressure, basically to see if there's a tipping point. Yes. So I'm barely pressing. Um, can you see your hand? Yeah. Um, I'm basically pressing about this hard to start, Okay. and then I go to about that. You go a little bit harder. Just a little harder. I just want you to meet my force. Can you constantly send feedback from your muscles to your brain? Right, right, As the right. force increases, can you still maintain that? I see. Well? Yeah. Awesome. I'll press that one. Come in. Good. That lost as well. That's good. Good. A little bit of shaking, but nothing too bad. Hamstring. Hamstring. Awesome. So both legs up like you're going to do a glute bridge. 90 degrees here. One here and one here. Go ahead and just completely relax for me. I'm going to pull out this way. Testing the strength of the hamstring. I see. Okay. So don't let me pull out. Pull out. Good, and relax. Try not to use your hip flexor. Feel this muscle turning. Yeah, I did, yeah, actually. Yeah, good, good. So you're compensating with the hand training. I'm going to pull out, don't let me. And that is a little different, but it still locks. Good, that seemed a lot difficult. You all right? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> no, that's, that's a little harder. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Pull out, don't let me. Hip flexor, relax. Yeah, Try I, not can to use that. I can feel that. I can feel the hip flexor. So this one's weaker. You feel how there's a little bit of gear yeah. in that as well. So it's all qualitative, of course, but basically what that's Well, I feel like I was trying to not overtake here, so yeah. I was trying to let this relax, and then that was the gift. And that was the gift. Yeah. So basically what this, that's this means it's not firing immediately. It's not firing immediately, and it's not responding to the stimulus. I which see. tells me a lot in your running style that you could possibly not be going through this full pull through mm -hmm. back to the top. Right? Mm -hmm. So as you're running, you might not be running too fast. Right. Light speed, you might not be flash, right. which might be you're not activating those muscles. But right. if you are running fast and this isn't happening, then we know we need to do some work. I see. We have Glute max. Glute max. Awesome. Go ahead and completely relax for me. I'm going to lift up here. We're going to test the strength of the glute. How many of you are doing the glute bridge? Just I'm going to lift up here. Come in. And that's locked. You feel the glutes on? Yep. Perfect. Try this other side. Lift up here. That one was better than that one. Can you feel that? Yeah, that is not. That is more hip flexor. Yeah. Pull up. A little better on the second. Uh, left is out of normal. It's a little funky. It's not that it's weak, but it's it's like kind of fine. I know. Kind of, do you feel that? I do. I, I feel it sometimes when I'm doing like different single like things. It like takes a the moment left. to like yeah. kick in. Gotcha. So the biggest oh, thing here is when we find asymmetries or a difference in the right and the yeah. left leg, we want to prescribe a lot of single leg exercises. Right. A lot of single leg lunges, single leg yep. squats, single leg A, B, and C, whatever it is, just do it with a single leg. Right. That will teach your body to use that leg. Quad flexibility. Quad flexibility. Awesome. Go ahead and sit at the very end of the table for me. Okay. The very, very end of the table. We're going to do what's called the Thomas test. So you're at the very edge of the oh, table. Oh, okay. Yeah, the boot is right on the edge. And you're going to take your hand under your right leg yep. here and just go slowly and just fall back onto the table. Okay. Just nice and easy. Just relax. Head down. Relax. Perfect. What we're doing here is we're checking for abduction. So the angle from here to here, if it's a little out, we can assume that the IT band is a bit tight. And I can see a slight abduction here. I can see that your hamstring is flat on the table, so we know that your hip flexors aren't too tight, and the right. quad's not sticking out straight here, right. which means the quad's not too tight. So I assume you take relatively good care of your body with stretching and things like that. Is yeah. That true? Yeah? Okay, awesome. Let's go and sit up and let's do the other side as well. So this side. Yep. Yeah. Nice and easy, nice and slow. Take your time and just relax. 
Good. We see the same thing here. You see AB duction, so relatively tight IT band. When you roll those out, it hurts pretty bad. Yeah, it's yeah, also good. Yeah, it hurts pretty bad. You might be running on a tight rope, and we'll check that out. But we can see a bit of tightness on the AB ductors or the side IT band. Yeah. But hip flexor mobility is relatively good. Quad is relatively good as well. Awesome. Go ahead and stand up for me. And I just want to see, show you what a false test would be completely. So you can go ahead and be the tech for a second. Okay. So as you fall back, right? Basically, yeah. I'll do it on this leg. So if the IT band is tight, this yeah. will be pulled out I this see. way. It's like a rope, right? right? Think of my knee as like yeah, an elevator. Yeah, it's pulled out. This IT band goes around here, so it just pulls this out exactly. this way. Exactly. Think of it like an elevator. Basically, if you pull on that car on this side, yeah. it's going to go out this way. Now you can see also, as I'm sitting here, my hamstring is not resting on the table. It's mm. popped up. My hip flexor is so tight, it can't relax. For me to push it down here, yeah. it stretches my hip flexor immediately. So mm -hmm. I need to stretch my hip flexor as well. Also, if the quad is tight, the leg will be out. It'll extend, right? Because this needs to lengthen for this heel to right. naturally drop down exactly. this way. So trifecta, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. See it all the time. You I need see. to stretch your quad, mm -hmm. hip flexor, and then the IT guy as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, he's good on all three of those. Yeah. He's rocking. Uh, rocking. Glute meat. Glute meat. Awesome. Go and lay on your side on the table. Ooh. So this is the one we see mostly, nine out of 10 runners have an issue with their glute med. Mm -hmm. Small muscle right here on the top of the butt. Stabilizer, big issue with valgus of the knee or crashing in. Right, if this isn't firing, this has a lot to do with my ability to stabilize my hip and sort of what my knee starts to do. So a little add on is that there's a big fight in our field about with foot doctors and hip doctors. Because as the right. foot rolls in, the knee crashes in and the hip is not stable, right. but also as the hip isn't stable, the knee comes in and the foot It's a chicken or egg, like what's exactly. causing what? what's causing yeah. it, right? We attack both. We mm -hmm. don't really know which one it is, but basically I'm gonna take your leg, pull it back, slight internal rotation, so rotate your leg in here. I'm gonna press it down, right? Okay. So it's gonna isolate this muscle here. Just don't let me press you down. Feel how hard that is? I'm pushing as hard as I was earlier yeah. with the quad hamstring. Yeah, that's hard. Right. So go ahead and flip over to the other side. So that was a fail, am I right, right? Oh, good. <laughs> good, good, good. Back, internal rotation here. Good, now I'm gonna press down. Don't let me. Good, good. Good, and relax. Okay. Failed, again. Failed again. Oh, Failed again. Failed right again. Striking out. Again, around 90% of our runners wow. have a glute med failure. Right. It means basically it's like an epidemic. Yeah. It's like the flu, it's wiping everybody out. Now, if you go ahead and stand up for me. It's not our fault. <laughs> go ahead and stand up for me. A little educational piece yeah. of this. As you're standing, go ahead and squeeze your glutes as tight as you can. Now, without relaxing your glutes, try and move your knees. Like? Like without, yeah, try, try and move your knees without yeah, it's, relaxing your, It's not gonna happen, right? Yeah. Also, you can notice as you relax, yeah. as you squeeze your glutes, what happens, your knees rotate. Yeah, outward, they start to right? rotate a little bit. The, basically, the glute knee is kind of pulling that. Glute is pulling that outward, opposite mm -hmm. of valgus. What we're probably going to see as you're running, is when your foot strikes the ground, we're going to see a little collapse in. I would mm. assume most likely based on what we found yeah. here. That's what we're going to see. That has, been, that has been one of my little running bugaboos since, has it? since the dawn of my <laughs> running career. Yeah, great. Yeah, so we'll check that out. We'll there. see if that's it. If it is, then we know it's a glute meat or mm. something in that abductor complex. Yep. We'll give you some exercises. Hopefully that'll be on. Yeah. Cool. Hamstring flexibility. Hamstring flexibility. He's good there. Touch the toes. And then abdominal strength. So last one on the table. Legs are up so the rubber meets the road, people, here we go. Legs are up at 90 degrees right here. I'm going to press down. Hands are by your side. Yeah. If you actually touch the muscle that's activating, it'll turn on itself. Yeah. You have so many mechanical receptors in your hands. Yeah, you that's great. Turn muscles on. Yeah. So I'm going to press down here. Go back. It's really hard. Lots of shaking, but you're good. So shaking is our co-activation. Yeah. Shaking is your body's way of saying, turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. Right. What's going on? I don't know how to stabilize. Yeah. Abnormal only because of the co-activation. So, concludes our PT session. Okay. Yeah. So Great. as you can see, we went through the dynamic mobility single leg squat, also the muscle testing. Gives us kind of like a nutshell of yeah. what you're doing in training currently, things that we might see in the gait analysis. Yeah. And it's more of a, it's kind of like a processing factor for us. We can kind of see, oh, I see the, the knee collapse in the gait right. analysis. He also had a weak glute knee and a strong quad. It's probably not the quad, it might be. Right. And that helps us prescribe the correct exercise rather than just use 100 different things to do. Cool. Sweet. So, so now we get to actually run. Yeah. All right. Here we go. <laughs> we <jump up>. So <laughs> this is where Trevor's...
Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're into this video, go ahead and hit the like video. Like, 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 like. Yeah, like you can like the video and hit the like button. That all works. Like, well. You can do all of it. Right? You can do all the liking. <laughs> um, dude, you look so tan. You make me feel not very tan. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Surf too much. Man. You surf too much. Surf anyway, too much. Um, you guys, drop any comments or questions down below as well. The video work. Yes, uh, Morgan, we're gonna continue with this outro. <laughs> um, if you have, uh, if you want to subscribe to our channel, guys, we have new videos coming out each and every week. Definitely hit that subscribe button, hit the notification thing. Hey guys, check out Perform for Life SF. Check out their website if you want a little bit more. If you're in the Bay Area, call in and get your own test scheduled today. Yes. We'll see you guys in the next video. See you guys.